Celebrating 65 years of broadcasting, you're watching WALB, live from our studios in Albany, Georgia. It started really when uh, I became interested in television uh, through seeing it elsewhere. A global outreach with its home in South Georgia. It all started with a little television station in a pecan orchard. Now it's a regional powerhouse. James H. Gray's vision brought local broadcasting to your television screen in 1954. Since then, we've seen times change, technology advance, and watched as you made WALB News 10 the local leader for news. This evening, we are looking back at the past 65 years of serving Southwest Georgia. The second television station founded in Georgia, WALB, aired its first broadcast April 7, 1954. And the legacy of the man who started it all lives on in Albany 65 years later. James H. Gray moved to South Georgia in the 1940s and started working at the Albany Herald on the editorial team. After buying the Herald, he bought WALB Radio, and by 1953, Gray expanded to television, applying for then built the building WALB TV in 1954. When we started down here, for example, we had no network. Uh, we had no... Uh, uh, videotape. Most of our programs had to go on live and the mistakes were enormous, but uh, we managed to persevere. Now the creator of Gray Communication System Incorporated also left his mark on the Good Life City by becoming mayor in 1973. As mayor, he pushed for the Albany Mall in the early 70s and the Albany Civic Center to be built in 1983. James H. Gray died in 1986. WALB's legacy of visual storytelling started with one man who picked up the first news camera for WALB. Sam Smith, an historic station icon, was the first photographer for our station over five decades ago. WALB News Tans Asia Wilton spoke with Smith in a two-day exclusive interview who explains the journey of how WALB News Department began. The stories we covered and the people that we covered and the places that we went, yes, I would do it all over again. The memorabilia that lay on this bed is years worth of memories, and the man looking down on them is Sam Smith, a person who lived through 55 years of WLB's history, reminiscing on his time during our two-day exclusive interview. No TV background. It was real complicated. I just went out there and applied for a job and got it. Needing a job, he applied to be a camera operator in the production department in 1960, and the rest was history. Back then, just about every show was live. We didn't have videotape. Literally making history as the first news photographer of a newly created newsroom, a station that once only had an announcer who would sit on a flat with a stool reading state, national, and international news. A year or two later, we, got, we had some 16-millimeter film cameras. From up north. And... Um, I volunteered for that to go out and shoot. And the evolution of the newsroom began. Well, the civil rights movement in the 60s uh, was the first big and long story. From the civil rights movement to the KKK rallies to the floods of 94 and 98, there was a mixture of chaos and good news, but Smith's hitting eye always behind the lens capturing it all. For three months out of the year, Smith would go back and forth to Atlanta to cover General Assembly while fighting with time to get film back to the station for the next newscast. We'd cover whatever was the important story of the day and shoot it and try to get it out to the airport and get it shipped home so the people here could edit, the, uh, could process the film. Because of his legacy and hard work, his name now hangs in the photography den at WLB. But Smith, who randomly filled out a job application, is grateful his journey led him here. Getting to go different places and meeting different people that probably most people would never go to or meet people. In South Georgia experienced this too thanks to a man who gave him that experience while holding the first news camera behind the walls of WAOB. Thank you for the opportunity of letting me work there and to try to help make the station what it is today. 
Sam is a true legend. He's still living in Albany. He traded in his Camber gear and now he enjoys picking up the golf clubs several times a week after retiring in 2015. Well, we're proud that we've never shied away from taking our cameras into the field to bring you the latest breaking news. But have you ever wondered about the cameras that stay here in the studio? Well, here's a look at an early WAOB studio camera. A piece of WAOB history lives on at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. Now, this is a RCA model TK42 color camera from the 1950s. While we've updated our studio equipment since then, one thing has not changed over the last 65 years. We still depend on the person behind the camera to keep our newscast running. Now, as we celebrate our 65th anniversary, we remember several firsts that have happened here at our station. John White tells us his career at WALB opened a lot of doors for him. He spoke with WALB News 10's Denisha Pearson about his journey as the first African American to work on the anchor desk at our station. I came to Channel 10 in late 1970 to get an application for to become a news reporter. In 1971, John White was the first black person to get in front of the camera at WALB. It was a job that almost didn't happen. The news director at the time said to me, uh, we don't hire black people. White tried numerous times, even talking to reporters every time he saw someone out and about. So he came up with a way to get into the newsroom. One day a reporter was getting ready for an interview with U.S. Senator and former Vice President Huber Humphrey when he was visiting in Tifton. White introduced himself to Humphrey and asked to take a picture with him. He said, Mike, check, testing one, two, three. Then I said, Senator, let me take you back to your group. So I walked him right away from the cameras. Chanton never got an interview. After stealing a WALB exclusive, he got a call from the news director. Jerry called me and asked me, was I still interested in the job at Channel 10? I said, Jerry, when can I start? He said, well, don't carry me too fast. Now, I'm, I said, you call me and I'm ready. I went to work the next day. Once he got in, he quickly moved to the front of the camera as a reporter. And I took a quick look at it and I read it really quickly. And he said, wow, have you done this before? I said, done what? He said, you were just on TV. You were on the news. Three months later, he found out the higher-ups were plotting to fire him. He was assigned stories that were more than 100 miles away. They gave me seven stories to do on a Saturday by myself, just me and the camera in the car. White got the stories done and was promoted to the anchor desk, but some viewers, he said, had a hard time accepting him. Some even called to complain. And I happened to get one of those calls one day, and they said, I want you to get that in off of the TV. I said, well, if you don't like what you see, then change your channel. Eventually, the viewers grew to like him. Looking back, White enjoyed his time at our station. He stayed until 1972. It was a great experience. Because you got to meet people that you wouldn't normally meet. You had speakers who came to town, you had senators and congresspersons, uh, corporate people who came to town. Now, John White went on to work in the Georgia legislature in 1974, where he worked for more than 20 years. Among his achievements, work on Georgia's 1977 lottery bill. He also wrote the law that made Ray Charles's Georgia on my mind the state song and brought the famed singer to the Capitol to sing it. White is now in his hometown of Montgomery, Alabama, caring for a family member. One Sylvester woman made a huge impact at WALB, becoming the first full-time female evening news anchor and then the first female news director. Dawn Hobby, a media trendsetter, worked over 35 years at WALB, becoming a pioneer for many women in media. Hobby started at the station in 1980 as a production assistant, running the teleprompter while also stacking scripts. Years later, Hobby was promoted to associate producer and then producer. After five years, she became an on-air reporter, and by 1986, she became the first full-time female evening news anchor. Hobby says that there was some reluctance to putting her on air as a woman in the full-time role. The journalist says at the time, news was a male-dominated business, but she led the newsroom's evolution. Javi was able to break through those barriers and became a trailblazer for women being accepted on air and in managerial roles. 
it was a life-changing, a life-defining career for me. And had it not been for the viewers and the connection with the viewers, I couldn't have stayed in the career. I mean, if the viewers don't like you, let's face it, you're not going to stick around. You're not going to be allowed to stick around. So I'm grateful to the viewers for giving me the opportunity to work in television news for 35 years. Javi adds during her 35-year tenure, her favorite part was getting out and connecting with people, telling their stories. Dawn received an Emmy Award in 2011 and later became the news director in 2013 until she retired in 2015. Javi received her real estate license and three months later retired from WALB. She is now an accomplished realtor. Devastating storms have rocked our region in the last three decades. A look at the communities that coined the term South Georgia Strong next. And we continue our look back through the years. Our station would not run without the faces in these photos. From our master control operators to our production crew, they've always kept us on air. A look at behind the scenes today next. South Georgians have faced devastating storms, destroying homes and lives. We've brought you life-saving information when it counted, and we've been inspired by your resilience when the worst happened. WALB News 10's Bobby Portavent takes a look back at the last 65 years of weather coverage to show you how South Georgians remain strong. From flooding during the 1990s to 2017's back-to-back -back storms that leveled parts of Radium Springs to the March 2019 tornado in Cairo, Georgia has seen more than its fair share of natural disasters. The Valentine's Day uh, tornado that was back in 2000 came through South Georgia and just completely destroyed an area of Camilla. More than 19 lives were lost as a result of it. In more recent memory, Hurricane Michael whipped through southwest Georgia in October 2018. Chief Meteorologist Yolanda Amadeo remembers Michael vividly. We were here at the station. We could hear the shingles going up and down on the rooftop here at the station. We were frightened as well, but we were here to make sure that we were passing along information to make sure that our viewers were safe. Six months later and many people are still feeling the effects of Hurricane Michael. However, Stuart Hardin is a father and America's paramedic who still feels the effects from the 2007 tornado that ravaged the city. An empty lot that once supported a house and a family remains empty over a decade later. The left is this vacant lot. So. Not rebuild. An empty lot is not only the memory he has from that whirlwind of a night. I immediately closed the bathroom door, got the kids and threw them in the tub and laid on top of them and snatched the shower curtain down on top of us. And uh, that's when all the trees started falling through the house then. After securing safety for his kids, his instincts as a paramedic kicked in. As soon as everything cleared up, I took them across the street to a neighbor's house and I uh, started checking with neighbors. It was his generosity and heroism that kept him, Georgia, strong. It was very devastating, but you know, a lot of good things came out of it. Now we're joined by Chief Meteorologist Yolanda Amadeo to talk about weather preparedness in times of disaster. Yolanda, after all we've been through, are our communities better prepared now because of our service? I believe so, Jim. Actually, uh, over 10 years ago, I came back from a conference, a uh, national, uh, the American Meteorological Society conference, and I uh, talked with the Jim Wilcox of the GM at the time, and uh, also Rick Williams, our news director, and I said, uh, here's a program whereby we can educate our community and on just how important it is to have a NOAA weather radio. We all need a backup. A lot That's of storms right. come, you know, during the overnight hours. And, you know, we all have activities we're concerned about the next day. But, of course, uh, we have put more than 25,000 NOAA weather radios in homes across southwest Georgia. We probably program even triple <laughs> that amount. But yeah. overall, I think one service that I can say that we've definitely uh, 
had an impact on is making sure that South Georgians are safe. And through all the storms that we've seen recently, we can be very glad that we know many of you are safe because of those efforts. And they still are willing to program them for you, right? Exactly. There you you can do that in your sleep. All right. Thanks yes. so much. <laughs> okay. Well, from what we've seen in our 65th anniversary special so far, it takes a lot to put together the elements of a newscast. WLB News 10's Marilyn Parker is live outside our studio right now to give you a look at what it takes to go 65 years years strong in the television industry. Jim and Carla, I wanted to take our viewers inside our microwave truck that lets us broadcast pretty much from anywhere, all with the click of one button. But you know, it's just not that simple. From producers to reporters, the digital team and the studio crew, we do a lot to make sure that we're giving you all good quality content. And since we're celebrating 65 years, I wanted to give you all a taste. What's up, Damon? I grew up watching this place, so it's important to me because I know that the work that I'm doing is not only being done for myself, but it's being done for all the people in my community. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, when we went on the air in 54, we were broadcasting one channel yes, sir. on uh, Channel 10. And with the advent of uh, the digital technology, now we can broadcast four different program streams on that same channel. I solely moved to Southwest Georgia to do it for the people. Every day that I do a story, it's solely to find solutions, justice for the people who live here in Southwest Georgia. That's what keeps me going. The hustle and bustle was fast, but I do it all for Southwest Georgia. WLB News 10. We want to make sure that we give you as many details as we can get as soon as possible. Um, we know a lot of times there will be something like an accident and people will want to know who's involved. We may have to wait for that information, but we are at least going to get you as much info as we can. We hope that our community and people who live here realize that at the end of the day, we just want to do the best job that we can and represent South Georgia the best way that we can. And we take that very seriously here at WALB. Now, I'm sure you all have seen some of the many guests we've had in our studio today. So on WALB News 10 at 11, you can hear what so's WALB alum have to say about WALB standing 65 years strong. I'm live in the newsroom, Marilyn Parker, WALB News 10. Well, do you remember Captain Mercury or Clem Clown. We are taking a look back at the classic programs that helped establish WALB early on. Plus, we are going to honor the memories that you shared with us leading up to today's special. Now, here's a look back at our news team back in 1985. You'll see some many familiar faces, including former anchor Tom Bryant. A caller from Bainbridge shared her memories of Tom with us this week. She said he was a familiar face around the city and was loved by many there. WALB's 65th anniversary special. Now you may recognize this face from one of our classic shows, Town and Country. Cynthia Hunkley, she's now Cynthia George, started out as a host for the show with Gil Patrick in 1979. Hunkley says she was working as a staff person on the United Way Committee when Doug Oliver called her about a job. She says she got home after the interview with Gil Patrick and her husband asked her what was the pay. She says she was too flooded with excitement to even ask. I didn't even think to ask. I was so excited. It, it really didn't matter at that point what it paid, but it turned out to be probably one of the best things that I've ever done for my career. And also, just personally, it was an awesome experience. Now George says she did several telethons when she worked for the show, and she worked at WALB for four years. Well, another Channel 10 classic show with only a horn to communicate. The comical Clem Clown entertained children of all ages on WALB. He was one of several characters, including Captain Mercury, that entertained kids here on WALB during the 70s. Clem Clown was part of the circus parade, and the show hosted a live audience of children. One Georgia woman watched from the comfort of her home, but remembers Clem Clown as if she was on the circus parade. We had a hard day at school. We were tired, and Clem made us laugh. You know, he actually made us feel like, you know, the world was okay again. John Garman was a WALB employee who played the silent clown. He had a speech impediment and decided to play the role as a mute, uh, a moot, excuse me, during his time on air. 
Clem Clown could also be seen making appearances throughout the community. Now, WAOB's 65th anniversary also gives Jim and me a chance to reflect on our careers here at Channel 10. Here's a look back at some of our favorite photos from over the years. Now, I begin with this one. This is uh, to the right. That's Al Roker. And then Lieutenant Governor Mark Taylor. We were at a fundraiser uh, for the then Darton College Foundation. And WAOB uh, helped to sponsor that event. And we got Al Roker to come down from NBC mm -hmm. and join us here. A lot of time, fun times. That was me back when I was a sports here, did sports here. I've uh, been here at 42 years, the first 25 in sports. A lot of great memories. And one other person we want to show, uh, I believe we've got uh, more on, web, on our web, WAOB. Mm -hmm. uh, we are honored that you have made us your market leader year after year, and it's not something our team takes for granted. We're going to share our vision for the future of WALB coming up next. Well, Ben Roberts started his journey at WALB News 10 right after college and about two years ago decided to try a new profession. Now, Ben is now the public relations manager at Phoebe Putney Health System. Loves that he can still make an impact in southwest Georgia. Ben was an anchor at WALB for more than 20 years and says having to say goodbye was one of the hardest things he has ever done. One thing that Ben says always stayed the same at his time at WLB was the love and the support of the viewers. While Ben knew he loved the people of Southwest Georgia, it was the flood of 1994 that made him realize that the community also loved him. Well, 65 years later, and Channel 10 continues to get bigger and better. We spoke to our general manager, Bruce Austin, about the future of the station. He recognized our responsibility as Southwest Georgia's broadcast leader and believes the future at WLB looks bright. That this station is the community's voice. Um, our viewers need a voice. Uh, there's a lot of just rural areas in southwest Georgia, and to be a voice for southwest Georgia is exactly what I want us to be able to do. Austin says he believes the new talent pouring into the station will play a big role in continuing to lead this station in the right direction. He shares his hope that we'll use each day to take another step forward, reaching our goals, and continue to be the number one news source for you. Well, thank you so much for celebrating 65 years with us. Are you looking for a specific memory we could not include in the special? We have exclusive content available online and on the WALB News 10 app. We look forward to 65 more years of keeping you informed.